Hi, my name is Pinky Gilani. You are watching Pinky TV. This is What Women Want, and we are on season three. Of course, the theme is Unlearn. These conversations are brought to you by SBM Bank, and we are filming at Gem Suites in Nairobi, Kenya. Remember, stay right here for your chance to win a phone with Safaricom. I'm so excited by who I get to meet whenever I do this show. Remember, our guests are so authentic. They're extremely real, and they're, sh they're, they're here to share their stories with you. So make sure you tag a friend when you're watching this, if you are watching this on Facebook. And if you are on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, help this community grow, and share these conversations because they are extremely empowering. Today, I'm joined by Marilyn Blockland. I hope I said that right. Yes, you did. Or do I call you, call you Marilyn? Marilyn works. <laughs> Marilyn, Marge. Everything. 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 Marge. Everything. I like that. Yeah, me Marge. too. You've got to yeah. do the bl big blue hair. Yes. So, Marilyn, on this show, we are teaching our audiences to completely own who they are because we're unlearning. As you've heard, the theme is unlearn. We're unlearning, waiting for somebody to introduce us. We want... Um, our guests to teach our audience how to own their space. So can you tell us who you are and what you do? Um, I'm a personal trainer. Um, I, I, I torture people <laughs> and they pay me for it. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm up and down Nairobi. Um, basically, um, I have people who I have appointments with at their house. Um, I also have a studio space where I teach pole dancing. Um, I also make arrangements with certain gyms um, where I have clients there in case we need um, equipment. But yeah, basically, um, I help people change their bodies, change their lifestyles if they allow me and if they're willing to be open and, yeah. and kind of learn a new way. And, and yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So you grew up partly in the Netherlands. I was born there. You were born in, in the Netherlands. Born in the Netherlands um, from a small town. I'm not from Amsterdam or okay. Rotterdam. Um, if, if you were to give it um, like a description, you can say kind of the countryside. Yes. Um, I was there for 11 years. Okay. And then um, in 2003, moved to Kenya. My mom's Kenyan, um, hence Kenya. Yeah. Uh, my dad's Dutch. Okay. And have been here ever since, haven't um, traveled back. I actually wanted to travel last year during the Rona. Didn't we all? Yes, oh. <laughs> but then I was like, well, I'm just going to put that on hold. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So growing up, what has been your influence in regards to how you viewed yourself in regards to your body? Um, it's, it's been a, a mix of both um, cultures slash societies. Um, when I came here from the Netherlands, I can, it sounds really silly, but I considered myself white. I thought I was white and I wanted to be white. Um, we, we see mixed kids are a lot more common now than let's say in the early 90s when I was born. Um, now, now it's like all the rage, you know, yeah. um, um, people are, you know, it's, it's, it's normal now. Yeah. Um, but I remember g going to school in the Netherlands in the entire school, it was me, uh, a girl like me, mixed. It was a Moroccan boy and an Indonesian boy, and that was it. Wow. In my neighborhood, there was a Filipino family. It was us, that same Moroccan boy. Mm -hmm. That was it. It's, it's, it's white people everywhere. Um, and I, I didn't see color all too much, and I hung out with white people, so I thought I was white. Right. Then I came here. Um, and I remember it was a bit of a shock because, um, you know, I, I left the airport and normally you're used to seeing white people. Yes. And now you see only black people. Um, so I had to get used to that. Um, and then I went to, I went to um, Braben, which is um, when I was, a, I'm sure it still is, was a really mixed school. So you have yes. Indian, you have white, you have black, you have... It's, it's, it's really it's mix, mixed, yes, yeah. people from all over. Um, so the only like transition was for me to just learn English and speak English. But other than that, um, I, was, I, was, I was relatively comfortable. Um, still wanted to be white. Wow. I would flat iron the living daylights out of my hair. You're kidding. F till I had split ends from like here to Tokyo. Oh, wow. Um, I would, because I wanted to be white. Yes, yeah. Um, really, really strange. 
at the mo at the time I didn't realize it. I just wanted to fit in. But as I've gotten older and kind of you know reflected yeah. on my on my on my life so far, um, and also kind of finding who you are, what you are, who you um, associate with, you know. Um, so now, I did one year in Brayside. Mm -hmm. So I was in Brayburn for, for a couple of years, and then I did my final high school year in, in Brayside. And that is, was, I don't know how it is now, but my year was um, predominantly black Kenyans, um, Somalis, uh, but mainly just, just black kids. Yes. And there was one white girl who was Dutch, and then there was me. Um, and it's, it's a whole different culture. The teachers also were predominantly all black. Um, in Brayburn, it was the same mix, teachers from all over, locals and, 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 and um, expats. And the culture was different. Um, I went, you know, people were like, oh, you're so small. Oh, you're so skinny. <laughs> Whereas in other schools, it's like, oh, you look amazing. Yeah. Oh, 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 you've lost weight. Oh, um, really? Yes. As you're growing up, wow. Um, well, I was, I was pretty tiny, but then in my teens, you know, you start growing a little, yes. you know, you become more of a woman. Yeah. Um, and now, so yeah, in, in, in Brayside, and I remember I once, so in, in Bourbon, I was never comfortable with my afro. Never. It would, it would be slick back in a bun or it would be straight and open. These kids sometimes would make fun of your hair. Kids are kids. Yeah. Brayside, however, I remember I washed my hair and I don't know, I, I, I maybe like opened it or something to like tie it back. And all these girls were all over my hair. Oh my God, what yeah. is this? This is amazing. And I'm like, really? <laughs> this? Oh, I want your hair. It's so nice and curly. They, I think at one point they even took my hair tie. Wow. And they were like, leave it. Yeah. And I, I was there, I was super self-conscious. And I was like, really, leave it? I never liked my afro. Never. I hated it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I didn't like the, the black side of me, the, the curly afro. Um, yeah, um, I was always wow. trying to tame it. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm in Berryside and, you know, within like the second week, everything has been stripped of <laughs> me and um, people are liking the side of me that I always try and kind of... Uh, hide. Yeah, hide. I, I deny. I deny, exactly. Yeah. I, I love my mother. She's very beautiful and I always wanted her figure. Um, but 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 yeah so i think that the, the main thing for me was the um, the environment i was in and whether it was healthy um, or not you know so that was that chapter in in brayside and i just fully so after the these two weeks of you being there did you now start coming into i stopped it? ironing my hair and you owned it yeah i was like okay cool we'll just we'll just rock it um so what changed was uh, it that people were celebrating yes. who you are? Yeah. Which never happened when you were younger? No, even in the Netherlands, um, coming from a small town. So Amsterdam, The Hague, Utrecht, Rotterdam, th I'm sure people are familiar with those places. Mm -hmm. Those are very multicultural places. Yes. Um, at the time, I'm sure right now the whole of Netherlands is really mixed. But when I was growing up, um, l like I said, you know, there weren't that many people of, of color. Now, whether you're brown, mm. Indian, mm -hmm. African, whatever. It was mainly just white Dutch people. Yes. S and so what would happen is um, kids would make fun of me. Um, mm. I remember on multiple occasions, once when I was six, I'll never forget, I thought this girl was going to like kill me. <laughs> I, was, I was in an alley, because you know, um, the way the houses are is the backyards are facing each other, and right. then you have like a path. Yeah. Um, so I thought this girl was my friend, so I was out just playing with her and then we ended up in this alley and we were walking to my house and she grabbed my hair and yanked it. And I remember I was like, what's going on? So I turned around, I'm like, what are you doing? And then she had this really like mischievous um, look on her face and then she's like, your hair, your hair, it's strange. And then it was actually the way it is now, but washed, so it was, it was curly. Um, and then um, I ignored it, so I continued. Mm. I'm so smart. Turned my back on her. <laughs> continued walking. Being the bigger person. Yeah. And she, she grabbed it again and took another yank. So I was like, this can't be happening. So I turned, I'm like, what are you doing? Um, and then she proceeded to make it quite evident that I am not white. So I ran home. 
I didn't say a word to my parents, but I was very sad and I avoided her. I'm like, okay, she's not my friend. Mm. Um, we moved from that area to another area in, in, in the Netherlands. And I remember once my mom made this beautiful afro and I liked it. I was like, oh, look at my curls. And I was like, okay, I'm going outside to play with my friends. So I'd worn this cute dress, because um, my mom, she always treated me like a doll. She liked dressing yes. me up, blah, blah, blah. So I go out, I'm going to play with my buddies, who normally see me in, I guess what I'm dressed in right now, just mm -hmm. jeans and a top, and my hair back in a, in a, in a ponytail. Yeah. I go out, big old mane. First thing one of the kids wa did was, he looked at me and he burst out laughing. And then they all laughed. Kids I normally play with. I cried, ran back home, changed my clothes, tied my hair back and told my mom to never do that again. So she was sad and I was sad. Um, so yeah, um. so, when, when, so that was in the Netherlands and you come here and you go into, in, into an international school, which even though it is you know, mixed, I have to say it's a bit on the white side of mm -hmm. life, um, especially at the time. I mean, everyone was flat ironing their hair. Right. No, I, I wasn't the only mixed then one. In the 90s. Yes. <laughs> Everyone was, you know, blonde streaks, yeah. piercings in the top ear. Yeah. If you're lucky, maybe a tattoo. Yeah. Fine. You know, everyone was flat ironing their hair, but I guess it's, it's very different when your hair has two extremes. Um, and then you go to a predominantly black school where the culture is very different, where women like straight hair, but they also like curly hair, um, and where they kind of embrace their. Cause, cause, you know, who you, they are. Who they are, because you're black. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to yeah. bleach yourself? I yeah. mean, that's kind of what they do nowadays. But when I was um, 16, I don't think so. Mm. Um, so that, that brace side was nice for me. I was, I was really scared to go to the school, let me not lie, because I, I don't like change. Um, but I had to just do that one year at brace side. And I loved every single second of it. Right. Every, I, I have never loved high school as much as when I was in Brayside. There was not this clicky behavior, everyone mixed with everyone, break time and lunch time, the entire year 11 group, we were hanging out. We would hang out with the year 10s, the year 9s, it's all cool. Not this clicky, you know. Nonsense. Yeah, it's, it is nonsense. Yes. Um, and it was a lot more real, but also the children's backgrounds were different from the children yeah. in Brayburn. Mm -hmm. I remember um, there was one kid who had been picked up in an armored vehicle with two bodyguards. In Brayburn? No, in Brayside. In Brayside, okay, wow. Realest kid ever. Wow. Not a peep from him who he was. One time Austin is like, who are these people that are picking you up? Yeah. They're my bodyguards. They're your what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. And then he would say, I don't think much about it. That's, that's my dad's life. That's my dad's influence. That's not me. Um, and my dad will not let, let it get to my yeah. head. Um, so yeah, just, just different, different families, different parents, different backgrounds. And I guess people don't realize how much our parents, what they do, how they behave influences us. Yes. And even, even parents don't realize yeah. this. You know, they project so much of themselves onto us and don't even stop and think, oh, Wow, all my flaws are in my child, mm. you know. Um, so, so yeah. So you you came you came into awareness of who you were very young in in regards to what you look like, yeah, like your hair. Let's say by the time I was sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was that period as a brace side. Okay. Because they would even make comments. Um, nusu nusu. Right. I was like, what is that? Yeah. Half half. Um, now, quite, let's say four years ago, um, interacting with a few, um, actually one particular South African lady, I, that kind of changed for me as well. But let's, let's just talk about that period. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm at Bray, Brayside, I'm like, nusu nusu. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're nusu nusu, you're 50-50, yeah. you're half half. I'm like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. They're like, ah, oh, it is what it is. Yeah. It's up to you what you want to take, How you, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, so then I started um, identifying more as I am brown. Okay. I am white, I am black. Um, and it is what it is. I have um, influence from my father, I have influence from my mother. Whereas before, I was like, I am white, you know. Right. Um, I mean, here and there, parts of me, um, you know, I, I wish I had my mom's figure, for example. Yeah. Because she's got this 
like small waist and then like a bum out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter how much she eats, it all just goes to her bum. bum yeah. Wouldn't we all want that? Mine you know? goes to my hair. <laughs> there you have it. Lovely. We all have our own, you know. But you should see my bum. It's like this. <laughs> we all have our own traits, you yeah. know. And the grass is always greener on the other it's side. True. It's true. Um, but yeah, so I just started embracing just being me more. And, 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 and also, um, as I, you know, you, you, you go out in the world and you start looking for work and whatnot yeah. and you start interacting with people. Um, you see other brown people and you're like, hey, she looks more African. Hey, that one looks more white. Hey, that one looks a bit of both. Mm. And, and then you kind of just be happy with where you are and the way you look rather than being unhappy and trying to look like something or someone that you but can never not, yeah. look like. You won't achieve it. Not unless you, you know, go and do plastic surgery, but you know. What does that? Yeah. So, so what, where did the journey, because I remember we modeled. Yes. You reminded me. <laughs> yes. 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Um, where you were saying you were Skinny girl, you would this thin. Yeah, 60, skinny girl. 62 kilos. All you'd live on is biscuits. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. And what happened? What flipped the switch for you where you were like, actually, you know what? I'm, I may be thin, but that doesn't mean I'm healthy. And I don't think that that is the case always. Um, what made you look at yourself and be like, okay, I need to love myself. I need to accept myself. And I'm going to teach others to do the same. Um, so having kind of woken up when I was 15, 16 and like, okay, I'm brown. It's okay. It's mm -hmm. cool. I can have my curly hair. I can have my straight hair. I can do, you know. My father always said, you're the best of both worlds. And I never fully understood that. Yeah. Um, but my, my dad was always really proud um, of, of his African wife and his oh, brown amazing. daughter yeah, and yeah. and my dad is very you know pro just just embracing the way we are yes and loving it my, my dad still today says you're the best of both worlds i'm like oh, oh. And he's like don't grow, don't grow a big head i'm like okay daddy <laughs> <laughs> um so i had good influence growing up my parents very loving, you know, you're brown, you're, you know, my, yeah. my, my parents would even say, people need to mix more. Mm -hmm. um, never really fully saw that, understood it because of influences from peers. And then 15, 16, I'm like, my curly hair is fine. I am fine. Started modeling. So I, I um, was looking for a job at 17, went to this gym and they were like, a gym I was a client at and they were like, oh, you can intern. It basically means grabbing coffee, yeah. picking up dumbbells. <laughs> I couldn't really get my hands on a client, but I could give a client ab exercises <laughs> because that's a no brainer and you can't really mess that up. Okay. Um, and, and basically I was also being trained how to hold pads, how to teach boxing and kickboxing. Two months into that internship, the owner calls me because he, he, he's like, oh, you're so, you're so pretty, you should model. I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> People are scouting for models. Where are you? Come now. I'm like, okay. So on my way to Adams, um, and there were these two ladies who were indeed looking for models. Would you be interested? I'm like, well, I'm super awkward. I don't know how to catwalk. I don't think I'm all that, but if you think I have potential, I'm willing to, to give yeah. this a go if you can train me and whatnot. So I signed up with them. Um, when you contract with them. And that's how that modeling thing started. So I would be going for auditions or doing a shoot or doing a show. And if I wasn't doing that, I'd be at the gym, basically trying to learn uh, about fitness. But my, my heart wasn't really fully in the fitness thing. Um, the modeling seemed more fun. Right. I, was, I was also 17. Um, <laughs> so um, I wanted to have fun. I don't want to take life serious. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so I, I did the modeling for, I think, um, yeah, three, three, four years. No, no more than four. And it was a mix of um, maybe um, like a fashion spread in the magazine, um, catwalk shows, um, and, and photo shoots. Yeah. Um, from from like um, what's it called, Samantha Bridal? We did an amazing photo shoot for their magazine. Um, two small small things. You right. Know? And um, and yeah, I found that a lot of fun, and and it made me more confident. 
I remember the first photo shoot I ever did, I still have the picture. Um, I still had baby fat. And I was, I was, I was slim, but I was, it was skinny fat. So yeah. I, still, I still had like a roll of a yeah. stomach and, yeah. you know, the, the jiggly arms. <laughs> um, and I wasn't that much into like weightlifting or eating properly. I just wanted to do cardio and be as small as possible yeah. because of the modeling. Um, so that went on, that went on. I had a lot of fun. It really boosted my, my self-esteem and, and my confidence. I'll never forget for Samantha Bridal. Um, so it was like, a, I think a two day or three, it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday um, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they three would days, have the, yeah. Yeah, the, the runway thing. And I think the second time I did it, they had a lingerie designer come in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and um, the people showcasing would pick their models, and I was picked. So I was like, cool. I was the biggest girl. Even though for myself wow. I was skinny, yeah. my hips wouldn't shrink. Yeah. Um, so I was always at 39 inches. Mm -hmm. um, everywhere else is pretty small, but my hips stayed. So this was another turning point for me. Um, All the girls who were physically way more appealing than me chose to wear full-bottomed underwear. I was in the changing room and I looked at my body and it was far from perfect and I was far from happy and comfortable with it. And I said, Marilyn, when are you going to fully embrace you? There's no way you're going to look that, like that girl because you're not that girl. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're comparing yourself to... I said, I'll wear a thong. No one else. Women with like perfect bottoms, you know, yeah. and then <laughs> perfect everything. Because everyone has insecurities. Yes. And even there I saw, hey, she's also insecure. And I, I'm like, what are you insecure about? To me, you look perfect. Yeah. And she would think the same of me. So I stood in a changing room and I told the lady, if you're okay with it, I will rock thongs. I will walk on that stage with my bum out. Whether you like my bum or not, because I'm doing it for me. Yeah. Okay, so that was short-lived. <laughs> um, I'm backstage, I'm in a thong, and um, the organizers are like, you do know this is PG, like, 13. Mm -hmm. You cannot. And I'm like, well, the designer said I could, so. So they gave me, like, um, a lesso. Yeah. To basically hold as it's covered around my bum. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that was another turning point for me in, in, in loving myself more, embracing myself more while modeling. Um, okay, then... I had to make a choice because I was now reaching my 20s and I was like, what's the next step in my career? What's the next step in my life? Because um, I, need, I need to at one point or the other start making some form of money. Sure. The fashion industry in Kenya is great, but if you want to make serious cash and if you really want to grow, you're either going to go to South Africa or to Europe or to the US mm -hmm. or to China, anywhere but in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to lose weight. Um, international requirements at the time were uh, zero, size zero, 36, yeah. 32, 34 waist and 36 chest. I was 39, 32, 34. And I was at my smallest. We're looking at not eating properly, skipping meals, doing cardio, basically being in a constant calorie deficit. Um, and, and yeah, I was like, okay, there's only, again, genetics, there's only so much mm -hmm. shrinking I'm do. going to do. Um, so I made a choice. I'm like, okay, I have modeling, I have fitness. Modeling, lose more weight, look even more like I'm 12 years old, because that's basically what you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't look like a woman, you yeah. know? And leave the country. I didn't want to leave the country. I said, okay, I'm staying in Kenya. I'm going to see what this fitness thing is about. And I'm going to further my, 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 my loving myself journey. So when I quit modeling, um, I remember I looked in the mirror and I didn't, I didn't really find it appealing. It's great for the designers, but not for me. Um, I was really skinny. Um, and I'm like, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. I like, I like a curvy figure. So I was like, okay, how am I going to get curves? Um, weightlifting. So change careers, change perspectives from, you know, admiring, you know, thin bodies to looking at someone like Serena Williams, looking at Beyonce, looking at Jennifer Lopez, looking at, hey, your next door neighbor who looks curvy, you know, mm -hmm. how am I going to grow? Because I'm not, I'm naturally not curvy. Um, so 
I dabbled, did my homework. I'm like, okay, weightlifting it is. It's a win-win. I get to be physically stronger. I get to grow um, basically muscle and, and, and also just, just grow as a person, physically be, be a bigger dress size basically. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, build a career and, and take that road. Um, so at 22 is when that happened, where I said, forget cardio. Forget eating lettuce the whole day. <laughs> We're going to eat chicken, Real food. eggs, <laughs> milk. We're gonna, you know, yeah. throw in some potatoes, some yeah. spinach, you know, um, eat according to what it is that we want. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I loved every second of it. Can I ask you something in regards to your moods when you were thinner or eating lettuce, as you say, and when you started eating well, what were your moods like? I'm happier, bigger. <laughs> Or happier when you're fuller? Um, Is no. Is that right to say? <laughs> so our hormones, I think we never stop and think. I think more, but men, men have the same. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about women. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you have a dip in the day. Oh, PMS. Yeah. Oh, my period is coming. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, these things are all mm -hmm. true. But it's also our diet. We can manage a lot of our moods through food. Yes. And that's something I started learning. Yeah. Because I remember when I was smaller and not eating healthy at all, um, my, my, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't always happy, you know, oh, I'm feeling tired, um, carrying groceries was a task, you know, just, just, just doing anything was anything, exhausting. Yeah. Um, majority of the time it was. Yeah. I, I, I didn't look tired, but I, you know, now, in eating a balanced diet, eating more regular meals, weightlifting, doing enough cardio so I can make it up a hill, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I noticed that I was happier. Um, I, yeah, you can say I felt fuller, all, all, all pun intended, yeah. you know? Um, so it was, it was a win-win all round. Um, and, and I started realizing, okay, when I eat these foods, this is what happens. When I do this, this is what happens. I started sort of like realizing and experimenting with myself. Um, and, and yeah. What would you tell anybody who's watching, who's, who's battling with their bodies? Um, you know, whether it's too thin or feeling overweight, um, looking at food and wondering, you know, because I, I read something the other day, it's like, who told you fruit makes you fat? And I was like, fruit makes you fat? No, That's so weird. I, I was <laughs> intrigued to read that. I'm like, who says that? So, you know, what would you say to somebody who is who, in a bad relationship with nutrition? One, we are what we eat. Um, two, if you don't like where you're at, change it. Only you can change it. Yeah, you can hire a professional who tells you what to do. But if you don't truly want it, you can spend four, two years doing absolutely nothing, going absolutely nowhere. It has to come from within. How badly do you want it? Which is something that I ask my clients all the time. How badly do you want it? You're not doing it for me. Yeah? And I'm not over here you know, needing mm -hmm. all your money. No, I'm doing it because I love you and I want you to get to where you want to be. But you need to want it. So that's, that's, that's number two. Do you really want change? Because if, if the fire comes from within, nothing can stop that fire. But if there's no fire, guess what? Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Three, you can do all the cardio in the world. You can do all the weightlifting in the world. But physical change starts with our kitchen. Whether you like it or not. So you need to change the way you're eating. If you want to grow muscle, guess what, my friend? You need to eat protein. Now, whether that's animal protein or plant protein. Your choice. Yeah. Your choice. Um, both, both work. Both work. Mm -hmm. people, people across the world have proven that both work. If you want to, let's say you don't want to um, necessarily build muscle, you know, um, but you want to you lose weight, you just need to eat less. Whether it's paleo, Atkins, ketogenic, carb, intermittent, psych, intermit oh, da, 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 <laughs> all these things. At the end of the day, what is it? 
calorie deficit leads to weight loss. Now, whether you're going to be skinny fat or firm or I don't know what, it doesn't matter. You want to lose weight? Eat less. Eat less. This thing of... Oh, Eat less, but don't starve. Don't starve. Yeah. Don't starve. Um, starving is also not good. We yeah. need to find balance. You can't go from one end to the other. It's unhealthy. It's not good. It's all about balance. Is balance easy? No, it's incredibly hard. For some, it's easier than others. That's fine. Um, but it's all about balance. And, and this whole thing of, oh, fruits make you fat. Oh, um, I don't know, animal protein is bad for you. Oh, oh no, <laughs> being a vegan is bad for you. But, uh, a problem with the fitness industry too many things being tossed around yeah eggs are bad eggs are good milk is bad milk is good white white bread is bad white bread is good it's it's it's, it's over it's an overwhelm it is but it's 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 also um this is not going to sound very nice but some people in the fitness industry take advantage of people yeah yeah, to make money. Yeah. It's, it's still a business. It is. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I like to keep it real because I've, I've been there. I've, I've been super small and I've also been really big. Um, and I've, I've, I've been at my lowest low looking at myself and not liking myself. So I fully understand when someone comes to me and I feel their pain when they're not happy with themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm super happy. I love my body. Yeah. Man, if I could tell my 16-year-old self, one day you're going to love your body. Eh? I'll be like, nah, that's impossible. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. at a point where I love me fully. And screw you and if where, you don't. Where does that come from? Is it self-acceptance? It's just knowing that, yes, this is where I'm at. This is what benefits me. When I do this, my body feels great. When I don't do this, I feel like yeah. crap. It, it is just that. It is, it is a journey you go on yourself. Um, you know, even for me, I, I, I tried um, carb cycling. I tried the ketogenic um, diet. Um, I've tried those and I tried them for a long enough period. And yes, when you follow them, they work. Maybe not for everyone, but it worked for me. Yeah. But I also realized, hey, I do like a muffin. So what am I going to do? Yeah, never have one ever, ever, ever. Nah, that's not going <laughs> to happen. I like food. Um, so f f for me, in, in my fitness journey, in my own physical transformation, um, I found a way that works for me. See, another thing is you can't just pop a pill and then boom, it's like that. It is a journey, just like with everything else in life. It is a journey. And we, we keep changing. You know, um, so so yeah. For, for, for me, it was just it's a mix of everything, and yeah. it's kind of what I what what I now preach to my clients, um, and they can love me or hate me for it. Um, I have clients that believe in in what I preach, and they stick with me, yeah. and, and their bodies are changing. Um, so there is no shortcut. You can't be like three days. I need to nope. lose nope. eight kilos. No, nope. but the beauty of the journey is this. Because it takes time, so much of you in that time changes. Mm. That by the time you are where you want to be, it's solid. Yeah. You have a full understanding of nutrition. You have a full understanding of what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You have a full understanding of what physical activities you like and you don't like. Which ones have the best impact on your body and which don't. That's the beauty of the journey. And that's it. Like you're saying, it's a journey and it ends up being a part of your lifestyle. Yeah, completely. It's not just something you do for a month and no. it's done. No. And, and, and what I also like, you know, with my clients is like, you know, I'm, I'm teaching you what I know. And the idea is that at the end of our journey now, whether that's six months or a year or two years, whatever, that you are able to pass that knowledge on to someone yeah. else. Because what is the purpose of a trainer? I am a teacher. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm teaching you something. Yes. Yeah, I'm passing whatever it is that I know on to you. Yeah. And if you can grasp it fully, you can pass it on to someone else. Just very quickly, because I know we, we spoke about this off camera, is about you know this whole um, idea of um, what we're seeing online and the ideal, the yeah. ideal body, what or you know the the hair, the nails, etc. What would you like to just say uh, to people watching about what we see online and how we compare ourselves to people online? Don't compare yourself. Social media is great for businesses like mine where I get to advertise. It's great for people who want to express themselves. It's a great way of communicating, but there's a fine line where one gets obsessed and one doesn't keep it real. 
when we leave our house, including me, I set my best foot forward and I put on my happy face. No one needs to know what I'm going through. Don't need to bother the world with it. Just, just keep going. That's the same for social media. People always post the good times. Not everyone. We have some people who post the good and the bad times, which is, which is great and refreshing. It's mm -hmm. called keeping it real. Um, I am, I'm seeing um, a trend, I guess, because of interacting with younger um, people and also having younger clients, is that, wow, people are deeply influenced by what they see and they never stop and think, is this reality or not? They don't. They see a picture, they absorb it, and that's it. Yeah. Um, they don't stop and think, has this been photoshopped? Is there a nip and tuck? Is it all real? Um, so don't, don't, don't believe everything you see on social media. Um, be your own competition. Don't, don't compete. If you don't have a bum, don't compete with a girl that has a bum. If it's not in your DNA, not unless yeah. you go and do plastic surgery, guess what? It's not going to happen. Mm. You can squat all the weights in the world. I know, I know. I've accepted. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess, you know, w w what's happening is, is um, people who are insecure, um, and we all have our insecurities, we, we compare ourselves to others, feel even more inadequate and end up being depressed not realizing that that person we are admiring, Lord knows what's going on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. eh? Lord knows. Lord knows who's funding that lifestyle. Lord knows what sacrifices are they making. And Lord knows if they're even truly happy. We've completely lost the plot as a society. We're so fixated on cars, money, prestige, bodies, that we've forgotten what's fundamentally important. Are you happy? But or no but, boob or no boob, acne or no acne, weave or no weave, villa or no villa, are you happy? Happiness is not in the BMW. Happiness is not in going to Brayburn. Happiness is not about living in Kibera. That's not happiness. Happiness, it's, it's the strangest thing and I'm still trying to like fully grasp it and practice it myself. But it's, it's being content and appreciating the small things that we take for granted. Okay, okay, so I don't have your amazing hair. I don't have your amazing lashes. Yeah, I, I don't have Indian blood. It's never going to happen. But there's other things that I can love about myself. I can love you for the way you are and love myself for the way I am. Yeah, I can sit in my car in traffic and be like, oh, I'm not in a Jaguar, but I'm in a car. Mm -hmm. I can be walking on the side of the road, oh, I need to take a matatu, oh, this blows. But you're walking and you have money to take a matatu. Why can't you be happy? There's people who aren't walking. There's people who are not going to a job. You can be unhappy about your job, but at least you have a job. There's people that don't have work at all. But you see, we, we don't do this. We sit there, boo-hoo-hoo, my life sucks. Well, you know what? Snap out of it. Maybe compare yourself to others who are less fortunate and just be happy with what's there. Be happy there's a roof over your head, you have food in your tummy, and you have a place to shower and, you know, do number one and number two, and what else, and what else? You have people, I've, I've interacted with people who are swimming <laughs> in money, and they're not happy. They're not happy, but they have it all. Yeah. You'd think they can buy happiness. Mm -hmm. Statements like, I'd rather cry in a Mercedes. That's great, but you're still crying. <laughs> facts <laughs> so 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 i i th and you know it's wow well, with with being a personal trainer and whatnot there's not so much that i can influence with that but i think as a society we need to try if we can to just snap out of this superficialness yeah and 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 just just keep it real i mean i um i rear-ended a car about three weeks ago with my bike <laughs> um, my whole bike was the, 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 the plastic stuff that's yeah. on it, right? It was all over the place. And I was like, ah, but I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. I don't it's, have a concussion. It's all about how we see things, yeah. etc. And I think that's important. I think also <clears throat> what you brought up, you know, such, such, such important issues about what we eat, how we look at ourselves, how we accept ourselves. These are things that are so so important and, and you know looking at our journeys as well yeah. and and understanding um 
where we are, where we want to be. Yeah. So you're you're such a great example of this. Um, before we end, just on a light note, uh, you also teach pole dancing. Yeah. I don't know why that's is that a is that something that we should look at as a light a lighter note. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is, it's, right? It's, it's fun. It's, it's fun, exactly. What happens, just talk us quickly through what happens to a woman when she comes into your class to when she's a certified, <laughs> quote unquote, pole dancer. Pole dancer. <laughs> um, one, it's not stripping. Mm -hmm. So anyone and everyone who thinks it is, who thinks it is, not. if that's what you want it to be, then it can be that. <laughs> Um, but no, I don't, I don't teach um, women how to take off their clothes. Yeah. Um, I teach women um, basically how to flip upside down, how to do a handstand, how to create shapes on the pole, how to spin around the pole, how to dance around the pole. Um, so that, that's basically it. Mm -hmm. I teach you how to dance on a pole. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, Google it and then you'll see yeah. shapes and yeah. what it is. But then um, at its kind of hidden core, um, when you pole dance, you have to wear shorts. You can't wear tights, because yeah. skin sticks, clothes really don't. You have to wear a sports bra, otherwise the girls will come flying out. Yeah. Um, and a lot of women aren't comfortable wearing short shorts. Leave alone in public. You know, so that's, that's step number one. I have to wear shorts, yes. Do I really? Yes, you do. You can come in tights, but you're gonna find out you're not, you're not gonna do much in your tights. Mm. Um, so that's step one. They have to wear shorts, they have to start loving what is there. Start cellulite, loving cellulite, the hair, under thighs, everything. the hair. <laughs> Whether you're skinny or big, because yeah. you know even women who are smaller are insecure. Yes. They want to be bigger. Women yeah. who are bigger and insecure want to be smaller. Whatever. Yeah. But what I find fun is we're all dressed like that, and we all compare. It's human behavior mm -hmm. to compare. So I look at Pinky's legs. I'm like, oh, wait, she has what I have. Oh, so I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Or oh, look, she hasn't shaved. Mm -hmm. um, oh. You know, so, so the, things, the things that we kind of hide when we hang out on the weekends or go on dates, you can't hide amongst women. Yeah. Um, and the scene or rather the, 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 the setting I create is it's okay, just come for the class. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and I, I've had some clients, oh, but my cellulite, and I've literally pulled up my shorts and I'm like, I have cellulite too. Mm. I've had some clients say, oh, I didn't think you have cellulite. Well, of course I have cellulite. My fat deposit is in my legs and in my bum. I have cellulite. I can get rid of it, but I don't want to because I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that shifts because these are clients that admire me. I've had, um, for example, I'm sitting in the pool class and I'm eating something. I get intense food, baby. Basically my stomach grows after a meal. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Sports bra, shorts. Um, I had one client, oh, your stomach rolls. I'm like, yeah, of course it does. I'm, I'm seated. Oh, I didn't, I didn't think that you have rolls. And I'm like, of course I do. Mm. I've had some clients, I didn't think you have stretch marks. Uh, yeah, I have stretch marks. Um, so I'm sitting there and I've had my meal and then all of a sudden my abs, well, the little bit of abs that I have <laughs> disappears and I'm like, your stomach is bigger. I'm like, yeah, that's because I've had a meal. Yeah. Oh, so your stomach changes. And I'm like, yes. In the gym, you don't get that because you're fully clothed. Um, but now in the, in the pool class, we are, you know, in the shorts and, and, um, and a sports bra. So that's really cool. All these things kind of die and then in between hanging upside down um, and, and doing routines, we get to discuss these womanly things. I had a, I've had a client um, once, um, Kenyan lady with, you know, she, she's got a great body. Um, she's got like a bum and a small waist. She, she's curvy, but she looks good. She didn't think so. She, she would come for class and we would be swooning over her curves. We wish we had some more, but you know, she's there, oh, thank you, thank you. Six months of doing um, classes with, with me, um, she, she went to the coast, came back. She's she like, you wouldn't believe what I did. I wore a bikini. Because what happened in for the- For the first time ever. For the first time ever. She, she basically embraced her body. And wore what she wanted to wear, which is perfectly fine, a bikini. Whereas normally, you know, women wear tights mm. and then they wear a well, one piece. Yeah. Um, and she said it's all because of how we treat each other in class. 
it's all because of how as women we treat each other we while we're exercising. We celebrate each other. We celebrate each other. You're there trying to hang upside down and it's the hardest thing ever and I'm encouraging you and the person you're in the cloth, you can do it, you can do it. And then she did it. And we're like, woo, we're all over, you know. So it's, it's such an incredibly positive environment, even for me, you know. Um, my clients might not realize this, but even they have helped me love myself more. Um, today, morning, um, it was hot. I'm from commuting, I take off my hoodie and I'm in my sports bra and I'm walking around and my clients are like, wow, look at your muscles. And I'm like, really? No. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but actually working hard on them. Small, small things like that matter. Yeah. Matter in a society where we are doing the complete opposite. What do women do most of the time? Criticize, each mm, other, judge Look each at other. her. Yeah. Oh, she thinks she's so pretty. Mm. Eh, eh, eh. That doesn't happen in my poor class. Yeah. It dies. So there's, there's a nice little community of, of us and um, before Corona we would um, hang out I would create because um, I only have two ladies per class and I have more than two clients in a month um, so I would create um, like excursions for us to do and then we would oh, all nice. hang out and all yeah. celebrate each other and it becomes contagious and they pass it on to their friends and it's it's good it's 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 impacting society on a very small little well, level in a pole dance studio I think when you impact the woman you impact society on a grand level you do yeah you do you do so well done you thank you that's amazing um, Thank you for your time. I know you're a very busy person. I, I try to be. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> busy impacting women and teaching women how to love themselves. Marilyn and I would love to hear from you. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know if you would ever try pole dancing. Um, I, I definitely would. I think so. I think it would be amazing to do that. Let us know what you think about body positivity and where you are in your relationship with your body as well. Remember, the more you engage with the show, the more chances for you to win with Safaricon. Thank you so much You're for welcome. your time. Thank you for having me. And thank you for sharing so many insights as well. It's been such a privilege and a pleasure. Likewise. <laughs> Remember, on this show, we teach you to be brave enough to unlearn. That's a, your reminder for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon.